How's it going everyone? This is Dr. Heffan. Welcome to another Crusader Kings 3 tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be mending the Great Schism as a Catholic ruler and I'll also be giving you some late to end game tips. Now it's been 50 years since the mid game tips video came out and as you can see Britannia has hugely expanded. We've moved into West Francia and Aquitaine. That was all my vassals doing. They're all murdering and plotting and warring in order to take those lands. Uh, same for this Ukraine slash Scandinavian region where I've been focusing my wars as the Emperor of Britannia has been in the Levant and Egypt region and that was mostly to gain control of the sites needed in order to mend the Great Schism. Now I said the Damascusids were our late game rival. They really aren't anymore. They're 30,000 behind us in levies and in the last few wars, I haven't really even had to fight their main army. That's mostly due to having two full bombard men-at-arms regiments. We siege so quickly. Basically, any of these little forts, these level 4 forts, they're done in less than a week. So we just siege through their lands, gain 100% war score, and their army that's raised who knows where, maybe over in their capital, takes so long to walk over that we've already won the war by the time they get there. Now, we should have been able to mend the Great Schism earlier with my our father's reign, Emperor Bjorfthirth. He was going to take Jerusalem from one of our dynasty relatives. He didn't want to give us Jerusalem, didn't want to be our vassal because, you know, he's a king. Kings don't want to be emperor's vassals. Like, we can look at him, we can say, hey, you want to be our vassal? No, he, he doesn't like us. Um... So we were going to take Jerusalem from him, but unfortunately, our father was murdered, and he was murdered by his rival. His rival, Martha Jesovich, someone who had no lands, had no, I mean, some okay intrigue, but like our emperor had really great spy master. In fact, the scheme was exposed. I could have taken her out with our own hostile scheme, but I saw, you know, 5%, and I thought, hey, it's not going to happen. But 5% still means there's a chance that it happens. And he was murdered right before mending the Great Schism. Now, she did become our rival uh, because we threw her in prison for some reason. And then we clicked the mass ransom button, which let her out of jail. So do be aware when clicking that mass ransom uh, if you have any of your rivals in jail. Maybe you want to execute them beforehand. Or maybe just not click that button. It would be nice if Paradox, you know, had an option in here to, you know, ransom everyone except for your rivals. Or maybe have a little pop-up when your rival comes up so that you can make sure not to ransom them. Because when you have 32 prisoners, and like before, if you go through a large war, maybe you have 60 prisoners or more, it's hard to keep track of them all. So just, just a note to watch out for those rivals. Do your hostile schemes against them, even if it does cause you stress, because them killing you right when you're about to do something amazing will it could, uh, could throw a pretty big wrench in your plans. Another thing to note is that holy buildings. So this building here in Constantinople, I was pretty psyched to get the Hagia Sophia. Look at this, monthly renown, plus 5%, two more knights. Piety per night, plus 0 0.1. Learning, intrigue per level of fame. I mean, this is a great building to hold. However, the faith of the holder must consider this a holy site. Catholicism doesn't care about Constantinople. We wanted this place in order to do the Mend the Great Schism decision, but we don't get the benefit of this. So when looking to, you know, take lands for yourself, <clears throat> you know, Byzant or Constantinople is still a great place to hold. It's giving me 24.5 gold per month and provides us with 4,700 soldiers. Like if we look at our capital county, uh, scroll, scroll, scroll over here, and we know we're only getting 12.6 here with 3,000 levies, and that is a fully upgraded county. And we haven't even fully upgraded Constantinople yet. We're still at castle level three. These buildings haven't been fully upgraded. So it's still a great holding, but you know, just be aware that these special holy buildings won't work for you if the faith 
your faith doesn't consider that place to be a holy site. And, you know, you don't get this pop-up until you actually take it for yourself. Uh, another thing is converting large swaths of territory. So we did a great holy war, or sorry, not a great holy war, a holy war for a kingdom for uh, Egypt. And currently we actually have a lot of it converted to Catholicism pretty uh, quickly. So if we look at the history of this kingdom, you know, we took it back in 1255. It's only been about 13 years and a lot of it has been converted. And that's because I gave every county to one person. So all these counties went to one person, uh, all Catholic Anglo-Saxons, and they've done a pretty good job at converting a lot of this already. Now you probably won't have to really worry about factions once you become a huge sprawling empire, but I mean it does help to just give each county to one one person. And if you have theologians or zealous characters, that's even better. Um, another thing is that Great Holy Wars. So Great Holy Wars can actually be more difficult against uh, a large faith. So we've done great holy wars against the Damascusids for like Syria or Arabia or, or any of these other kingdoms, but it's actually more difficult to fight those ones than against just the uh, the main holder, against the Damascusid leader himself. And that's because in the holy war, all of his little vassals that hang out here are gonna join it. And that means that they're not only giving their levies but also all their men at arms. So if I bring my, you know, a large portion of my army, maybe like 60,000 men, I can still get beat by a 30,000 man army because it's made up of all these smaller little vassals, uh, men at arms regiments. And so, you know, all these little like 2000 groups are mostly men at arms. And that means that their army is actually of a better quality than your army that's made out of almost completely levies. All those levies are just getting wrecked by all the knights and all the men at arms that have banded together for this great holy war. So when a great holy war comes up, you know, use the redirect war to somewhere that's easier to target rather than trying to target, you know, this huge Ash'ari faith, you know, this Muslim faith. Go after somewhere in Africa or maybe somewhere up here where you're not going to get wrecked by so many different vassals. Uh, one more tip is never click this button. Now you can see we have 19,000 or sorry 1,993 living members. If we click this the game's going to crash. There's no way it's going to open it. And in fact you shouldn't really ever click this button. Like, the dynasty tree is not that great. If you want to look back at your old rulers, go to the lineage. This is much better. Or you can just click on your guy and, you know, go up through his parents and through his parents that way. Going into this open dynasty tree, and the reason why I'm harping on this is because I've clicked this at least three or more times, and having your game crash three or more times because you actually accidentally clicked this button instead of the open legacies button is a huge pain. And as you guys can see, like the amount of legacies that we have unlocked is huge. We're going to be able to unlock the rest of these probably within the next 50 years. We're making a huge amount of renown and that's almost all coming from the amount of living members that we have. Now we can get this huge increase. You can see we have more living members now than we've had or at least over 50% number of living members than we've had total in our dynasty. And that's because they're all getting this, you know, beautiful trait plus the uh, the legacy trait of bounteous loins. So they're pretty much all getting this plus 40% to fertility. And, you know, this, the blood legacy is giving them all those really good congenital traits. And the marriages there everybody's getting married off to everyone we have desirable match marriage acceptance goes up you know they're all handsome so they're very attractive and we um we have the legendary status for the dynasty so everybody's getting prestige for marrying into our uh our line so that's why we're having people everywhere plus you know you can give all these counties out from the Great Holy Wars to members of your dynasty, which 
I think the game does better, actually, in making sure that those people continue to get married and have children. So we are just exploding in members of our dynasty, which means we have tons of renown to unlock all the legacies that we want. So, I believe that's all the tips I have. Let's just click the button to mend the Great Schism. We have the five sites that we need. One god, one church. We have mended the Great Schism. At last, the Great Schism between the Western Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church has been mended. That's right. The Orthodox clergy has been forced to bow to the undeniable authority of the throne of St. Peter. The few amongst them who still cling to the outdated and heretical rites will soon be brought into the fold of the true ecumenical church, one way or the other. And of course, one way means holy wars. So we've restored the universal church. They're all going to lose the ecumenical trait. Uh, none of these other religions are around, the Christiani, Coptic. Unfortunately, they've all been removed. Only orthodoxy is still around. But this means they are no longer ecumenical Christians, which means we don't see them as astray anymore. So if we go over to the Byzantine Empire, he's Polishian for some reason. Let's find uh, let's find some actual Orthodox. They're no longer ecumenical, so we should be able to. Hmm, is there any free uh, Orthodox rulers? Maybe somebody up here. Huh, does not look like there's any Orthodox rulers who... Maybe this guy? This guy's Orthodox. So now we can declare a holy war because we find them hostile instead of astray, which is what ecumenical gets them, which is why you're unable to declare holy wars against them. I should have uh, highlighted that before I clicked the Mend the Great Schism button, but I'll just have to take my word on that. So this is pretty much the end of the Alfred of Wessex dynasty. I'm going to make a follow-up video on, you know, what my thoughts are going through this first playthrough, what I think some of the issues with the game currently are, where Paradox can look for some improvements. Um, but yeah, I'm probably just going to keep this dynasty around just to get some final achievements. You know, we still have some innovations to unlock. Uh, get to the final ending date, create a new religion, create a religion where my, you know, emperor is naked, all that fun stuff. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you've been finding these tips very helpful in your quest to become the most glorious emperor ever. Until next time, please do, as always, remember to take care of yourself.